All right, hi guys. Um, so it's a bit of a funny day today. Sunday, a, bit, a little bit on the cloudy side. Really quite moody though, and it has tried to rain a couple of times. Um, just off to see my parents and my brother-in-law, my sister, and my niece. Just going to say hello. Um, spend a bit of time with them. And uh, obviously, being doing what I do, obviously lots and lots of photography, you want a camera that you can take with you anywhere. Yes, little compacts and everything are brilliant, but the RX10 Mark IV for me, it sort of is the one to take because you can get it in a relatively small bag. It's like being a girl with a handbag, that's, that's what you become. <laughs> um, so basically, um, you've got you know a good size camera that's an SLR size basically or DSLR size um, but with the 24 to 600 mil usability so you know if I see some wildlife and in a day like today where it's relatively dull and murky because you've got an f4 600 mil lens you've got a lot more light coming into the lens compared to say the 150 to 600 Sigma uh, f6.3 so it's a lot more usable in the real world um, and obviously only a lot lighter, so you don't have to carry all the, all the uh, kit with you. Um, so, you know, for a day like today where I'm just cruising over to see family or whatever, um, it allows you to, you know, just have something with you that you know you can get some really, really good shots with, but without the hassle. So, you know, and like, like everyone knows, you know, knows me now, um, the RX10 Mark IV sits in my bag, and that is my big lens. You know, it just makes it a lot easier. It means I've also got two cameras with me at all times. Um, you know, if I'm out and about with the other camera, the A7R3. Um, so yeah, we're just um, just sat in traffic at the minute. Just um, looking at there. there's a little bit of blue sky over there, which I'd imagine is sort of Camber way, Camber Sands way. Heading out towards Tenterden and Kent. Uh, nice and countrysidey. Uh, but we'll see what's what. Um, yeah, no, I just thought I'd say hi and just do a little video. Um, hopefully, I might stop on the way there or the way back and take some photos. So I just thought I'd do a little video explaining where I'm off to and, and everything, and uh, go from there. So hopefully, it might be something. Uh, well, the sun's trying to come out now, which is good. A little bit of uh, moody clouds and a bit of sunshine, a little bit of blue sky, always looks good. Hopefully some maybe a rapeseed field, some nice yellows, and sort of moody sky could look um, quite nice as an image. Actually, we shall see. There's nothing at the moment I've seen anyway, so hopefully we get lots of sheep. As you get into Kent, you get a little bit more, uh, a lot more sheep fields, especially over towards Rye. Um, baby lambs there as well. So we shall see. Um, I've seen a couple of people have had um, a few issues with it. Alright, sends. Uh, the, the Mark IV anyway, um, a couple of buttons not um, sort of doing what they should, um, you know, and a few, I saw a menu screen that was flicking around, but quite often it's just a bit of grit or something that's got in into, like, say, where your wheel is, uh, you know, your, your, your uh, menu wheel, or your dials, or your, or your uh, uh, zoom ring, or something like that, that can actually cause quite a bit of hassle. Um, I had a little bit in one of my, uh, on the zoom ring actually, that was causing, there's a rapeseed field right over there. Um, it was causing me grief. Um, but I managed to get it out just by rotating it a bit and just blowing blowing a, a, an air blower in there. So I managed to actually clear that out. Um, so it's just a case of persevering a little bit. And I used a tiny piece of paper, just a, sh uh, what was it? Say, a little bit thick, like a thick, um, almost like a photo paper actually. Probably just about getting there. Um, just the corner, and I just went round the outside edge into that area, just between the um, the body uh, of the lens and actually the wheel itself. I managed to get a load of sand and grit out uh, where I'd been down on the beach, and obviously uh, it got blown and stuck to the camera and gone gone everywhere. Um, so I managed to uh, sort of get round that bit. My my RX7 Mark IV has been absolutely abused. Um, heavy rain, sand, wind, the lot, and it is it's showing it. <laughs> Um, it still works fine though. Oh, there's another rapeseed field over there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I don't know if I can get anywhere with a good view or stopping area. There's a problem when you're out in the countryside. In a car like this as well, I just can't just pull off the road because it's quite low. 
so it's a bit difficult just to park up a bank or something it doesn't really work and even these dips are it makes it difficult um, so generally I'll try and find a lay-by or something and walk back up so a bit like this one here um, I can't see anything over that way now but yeah no so um, yeah anybody who's got any issues with their RX-10 Mark IV it could be something simple like that a little bit of grit or something has got into the into that area and it's just causing um, it to malfunction slightly uh, which I on one occasion had that um, but other than that it's, I think sometimes unfortunately things we make it's man made man designed whatever um, there's a lot of yellow there that could be quite good um, can cause unfortunately you're going to get a percentage of the failure rates and um, someone told me I think ages ago it was something like 10% of all electronic goods even if they've been checked or anything like that will fail in the first year or have significant issues um, that may cause a little bit of grief um, which is obviously a shame especially when you're paying you know a lot of money for something um, you know with cameras it's either gonna you know if you even if you knock it you know you can give it a bit of a jolt or drop it it could cause you um, cause the uh, camera to fail or have a shutter failure or something like that you know um, so it's just a case of sheer luck a lot of it I've dropped cameras before and been fine you think they're fine but six months down the line the shutter mechanism fails you have to have a new one um, but, uh, yeah, that rape seed field must be over there um, you know so it's just a case of just wait and see and you know persevere with things you know it could be um, a lot different to uh, what you know what you're expecting it to be you know unfortunately things uh, do fail uh, and that's sort of out of your hand that's the case that's why you have warranties you know at least 12 months warranty especially in the UK uh, my Sony A7R3 has got the five-year warranty on it, which is a good sign that they actually rate that. Oh, look at that! They actually rate that um, uh, that camera that good. You know, if they know it's good for five years of use, um, you know, it's going to be worth worth owning. You know, for the value of it as well, it's quite a lot of money. Um, that's the way it is, you know. down here I reckon there might be a nice shot to be had here yeah lots of yellow so we'll have a quick look and then uh, I'm gonna go and see some family and then I'll probably try and get some pictures on the way home as well but the sun's really trying to come out which it is a little bit if that really makes the uh, the yellow glow and the clouds are still moody like that it's um it makes some really nice shots. It depends on my angle of view. There's a couple of spots I'm might be able to do. Except we're going down and down and down at the moment, so that looks like a a field that's worth you can see it from here. yellow anyway there's a little lay bar here on the left so what I'll do is I'll put in here take a couple of pictures let's see actually saying that let's go down the other end first because there's some yellow far down that looks quite nice doesn't it there's one house there so we'll pull back in there in a second when we come back This is where down here the swans could be swimming. I think I just spotted a, a white a white bird. There's one. So we're gonna stop down by this little bridge down here on the uh, right hand side. There's baby lambs there look as well. So we could get a few nice little shots here quickly. But, uh, right, I'm gonna park and I shall see you soon. There's a swan.
Right. The grass right in the way at the minute. Yeah. Wide autofocus at the moment. We're going to go to spot. Just so I missed that bit of uh, reed there, is on. So with the RX10 Mark IV, obviously at 600 millimeters, a wide open f/4. As you can hear, there I was I was shooting at burst just to make sure you get the um, get the shots nice and sharp and everything. And it just gives you a few shots to look at rather than just taking a single shot. End of the day, these cameras are designed to take thousands and thousands of shots, and a lot of the time it's not even using a mechanical shutter; it's using a electronic shutter. So there's no wear and tear most of the time, especially on that burst rate. Um, and uh, sharp as always the light was really nice because it was actually coming from sort of the left hand side of the shots coming down so really nice quite soft light being diffused by the clouds a little bit so that worked quite well um, and all these shots you'll see today are completely unedited and they're straight out of the camera sun's out as well look at that nice little bit of a come on So I've never actually heard a swan make much noise before apart from a hissing sound so I just started making random noises trying to get it to look back over its shoulder sort of thing uh, which it did um, which I'm thankful for because it's quite a cool photo. That's quite clear water. Oh, we got here just in time because he's just cruising down there. So here's a wide angle shot of uh, looking straight down. As you can see, they're really moody sky, but really quite nice light as well. It was quite soft, but um, quite nice. That was really quite clear, that water. Some more swans right down the end there. Huh. Right down the far end, I don't know if you can see. Not going to get a very good shot, but it's worth looking at. So this is a heavy cropping, as you can see there. And they're a good, I don't know, I'd say 300 metres away. Right down the other end of the, uh, the sort of river there. Three of them. I think there's some tadpoles on that lily or pond leaf. Yeah, it is tadpoles. Let's get some shots of those. So I spotted, um, looking down into the river, um, some tadpoles just sort of resting on a, a leaf there. Um, the water is really clear, which is a good sign. Obviously, it's relatively clean. Um, and then there was a couple of, obviously, these leaves here. But you can see the water tension right around the edge of the leaf there. It was showing up quite well. Um, how it's just almost breaking the tension of the water. Which is kind of cool, and then I did a, a close up on the top, the top section of this leaf, as you can see there. Um, I'm not sure that is actually the white thing there, but obviously there's a bug just sitting there resting as well, which worked out quite well. And then sort of look left um, to where I was stood, and you can see something moving around in the water. I didn't know what it was. Uh, it turns out it was almost like a kind of like a wasp, but not really sure. It was black, um, but um, it was obviously trapped and couldn't get out of the water. And this this bug here has come over to have a look. Um, decided it was too big probably to eat or um, still alive or whatever so he buggered off um, so I walked around a little bit closer as you can see there it's um, sort of stuck in the water tension sort of gone through the membrane um, or the surface or whatever and uh, you can see all the other bugs flying around there's loads of them everywhere right got a few cool shots there um, which is cool Big bug of some sort that was uh, stuck in the 
in the water. Let's go look at these baby lambs. Um, so yeah, there'll be some cool shots hopefully so far. The sun's been really nice to me. It's just it's just a nice soft light. Look at all these lambs, loads of them. So we'll just pull over here and have a little walk along. Them. Let's see them. And that swan should be on the way up as well. And some baby cows as well, the likes of it. So let's go and snap a few more pictures. And a pheasant or something in the field. Have a look. Or a chicken. <laughs> Who knows? So yeah, I could see right over the other side of the field there all the cows and the, the horses in the distance as well. And I could see a bird of some sort, but obviously from miles away it was um, hard to tell and it kind of looked like a chicken. But actually it is a pheasant. Um, and then the baby lambs were obviously checking out the water and eating grass and things like that and enjoying themselves. But then they started running around, just a group of them really enjoying themselves, which is really nice to see because obviously very happy, um, just having fun, which is really nice. Um, and there's one of here having a little hop and a skip. Which is uh, kind of cool. Um, shooting at 500 frames per second, and uh, he did a little skip there. Except I reacted a little bit too quick and I stopped it just a little bit too early, which is a shame because it kind of got me midair on the second rebound, um, which is a shame. But never mind. Um, but it's kind of cool to see that. It shows how sort of alive they are. Um, and then two of them just legging it back down towards the uh, where their mothers were. Um, it's a shame. Obviously, once you're in um, HFR mode and once you lock out as you can see they're going out of the focus now um, your focus is locked and your exposure is locked and everything so you kind of restricted on what you can do as they go out of focus there uh, here's a few few photos um, just quite a nice afternoon really quite glad I went out um, obviously went to pop to see family and everything um, and uh, the light was okay uh, it kept the sun kept coming out a little bit which obviously I got a few shots and uh, there's a few shots where the sun had gone back in and I hadn't adjusted my shot speed uh, enough uh, or I brought it back down a little bit and there's a couple of sort of uh, shots that weren't quite sharp enough um, so not all perfect shots today um, as you can see the open road and there was this this shot for example um, this bug here as you can see there not all that sharp but um, it's a case of that little pop-up flash on the RX-10 Mark IV is actually a little godsend really. You just pop it up, keep adjusting your exposure and everything as you would. And uh, it gives you, because that, that um, flare head was moving around in the wind quite a bit. So it just froze the image, which is great because it allowed me, you know, a sharper image then. And then it's just this is where those flowers were, that's where the, um, the bugs were. I love that little bridge there. Quite amazing how, how it was built and obviously it was used as a farm crossing and then um, I was a big rock so I just decided to drop it in and do a little bit of slow motion except I misjudged how wide it was and not to look down quite enough just about caught it but it's kind of cool how it splashed right back up um, so it worked quite cool and then uh, once I got to my parents place they've got um, a few bird feeders and stuff outside and uh, a couple of birds lots of um, different types these ones here having a little bit of lunch or afternoon tea um, and uh, I just shot this from the front door really and as you said it was getting dark not say dark but dull the sun had definitely gone in the moody clouds had moved right over so still shooting f4 so it still allowed me to get 500 frames per second still at ISO 100 and then here's a shot as well um, but this is at 1 25th of a second at 600 mil f4 so anyway guys hope you enjoyed that um, any questions please ask as always and um, you know I'm quite happy to help if I can and uh, just please keep watching and um, obviously any suggestions or anything like that please um, please feel free to uh, comment and um, make suggestions and whatever you think really um, anyway I shall see you soon and uh, don't forget to push the uh, little notification bell as well obviously once you subscribe thank you very much cheers bye